Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and today we have something new to play with. We have a mount that will be the basis for my ultralight, ultra portable and fully automated astrophotography rig. And fully automated is very important because it's the only way to be perfectly lazy. So there will be several parts to this making this little ultimate piece of, uh, of kit. Uh, and we'll start today with the mount. Now the mount that I've chosen is was supposed to be the Crux 140 Traveler and that didn't, that didn't work out. Uh, it had problems especially with the declination axis and it felt like I was a better tester. And if you want more information about that, that very portable, amazing, doesn't need counterweights and extremely expensive mount, uh, please go and check above because I talk about that quite a bit. Uh, my first impressions and then why and I ended up returning it. So instead I went back to uh, the origins because I already had this mount before and I sold it when I bought the Crux 140 Traveler. It's the AZ GTI and so I'm opening the box. The box are super simple, uh, at least the ones in Japan. I don't know about in the US but um, I open and there is a manual which is extremely important to read very carefully. Then we have foam. Flies not too bad. And we have a little cable, which is a shutter release cable, I assume, for DSLRs. And then we have the mount itself, which is what we are interested in. So this mount, the AZ GTI from Skywatcher, is actually supposed to be uh, used, as its name would imply, like AZ, uh, in alt as, uh, alt as mode. So you're supposed to just like screw it into the tripod like that, and then you can uh, use it with a smartphone. You know, you turn it on and it will uh, create a Wi-Fi network that you can connect to with your smartphone and then control the mount from your smartphone using the SynScan Pro app or Sky Safari. And, you know, I've used it, uh, my old one, a few times like that and it worked shockingly well. Um, now, this mount, it's cheap, it's light, it's small and the quality control on it is terrible. Um, in particular, this is my third sample of this mount. The first one, it was one of the very first uh, samples of those mounts being sold. I bought it from Europe and it was decent, but for example, the, um, the azimuth axis was kind of off center. So sometimes the gears were binding. It was not very pretty. Um, the second one, the one that I got a week ago, actually was perfect. It was awesome, but it had the issue that in the um, within the clutch for the uh, altitude axis, there's supposed to be threads, M12 threads, where you can attach something like a counterweight bar, which is what I want to, since I want to put this mount into equatorial mode to make it suitable for astrophotography. Well, those threads were not there. It was smooth, desperately smooth. And so Skywatcher, or at least the reseller of Skywatcher in Japan, Cytron Japan, sent me this one. So this is, uh, the unit that does have threads. So if you already have this mount, or if you just bought it and you think that one day you'll want to attach a counterweight bar to it, check whether there are threads in there, preferably before your one year warranty is over. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, uh, just for information too, so we have altitude, which will become the declination equ equatorial mode, is done using this little ah! clutch, which you can remove easily, as you can see. And, you know, I can then move it. Let me put it back. <clears throat> Whew, back in business. And we have another clutch for the azimuth axis, which will become RA uh, here, this little uh, thing here. And, you know, it works decently well. But for the moment, what we want is actually use it in equ equatorial mode. Before we do that, one more thing. I really like dropping things, don't I? Uh, it is actually, it can, it is not, but it, I mean, it can be battery powered if you can manage to remove Ah, if you can manage to remove the battery slot from it. So um, it accepts uh, eight 1.5 volt double uh, A batteries and then you can actually run it without any external battery, which is actually pretty neat. I, I really like uh, that. I never actually used that feature um, because I always had a portable uh, power pack, 
but you know it can be uh, I think it can be very useful anyway now we want to put this in equatorial mode which is why we have a second piece of gear which is in this beautiful cardboard box um, and it has card I like dropping things it has an allen wrench it has cardboard and it has a wedge which will will not drop I think my flooring with my floor would not like a heavy wedge like that so it's probably around 700 800 grams maybe even a kilo I'm not sure exactly um, so this is a wedge equatorial wedge from Skywatcher as well and it is supposed to be used with the star adventure their uh, star tracker so but it just so happens that you can absolutely use it with the AZ GTI. Now there are other wedges available, like one of them apparently is William Optics, another one of course from AstroTrack. Now that would be probably the Ross Royce of, uh, of wedges. And um, we have something like from Telescope Optics, uh, from Jitzo, something like that. I had that a long time ago, it was terrible and I do not recommend it. Um, but you know, the principle is the same, we get the wedge out we can screw it in okay and uh, we can actually incline it after i adjust the bolt here we can incline it like here and what's pretty cool is that it has um, a quick release plate almost so we can unscrew here get this out we have uh, a three eighth of an inch so everything here by the way like this wedge the uh, mount the, the whole way to mount them is three eighths of an inch all across and uh to to mount it on here you'll actually you will want to see that there is this screw here which prevents this from basically falling off like um uh, so it can be quite useful and it also will go into like some small indentation that we have here i'm not sure how visible that is but there are two small indentations at the base of that mount and so what you want to do is uh, loosen this bolt enough that uh, here it's flat you want to then um, screw in a little bit the center three eighth of an inch uh, photographic kind of thread and then you want to tighten this one so that it fits into one of the um, uh, little grooves that were there and let's see it looks like it does now it cannot move more than that so i can tighten this and i can use the provided allen wrench to tighten the actual quick release plate to the mount Okay, it's pretty tight now. And so I can just like slot the mount in. And it feels like, uh, yeah, I need to tighten the um, altitude adjustment. It feels like the mount should be secure, but we'll see there is a big problem. We'll see very soon. Bam, uh, the mount will hit this knob here. So that means that this knob cannot be really used. So let's remove the mount and we need to remove this knob. Goodbye knob. And we'll replace it with, I believe it was M6, an M6 uh, bolt with a matching Allen wrench. So I'll just slightly screw in the M6. We'll put the AZ GTI back on. And now suddenly we have more clearance for it to turn around. So let's tighten this bolt. Okay. And the AZ GTI is now on a wedge so that it can be uh, mounted equatorially. So uh, the point being that the axis here pointing this way will be towards the celestial pole whether it's the north pole or the south pole the uh, altitude axis now becomes the declination axis and the uh, azimuth axis becomes the ra axis okay so what's the next step well the next step would be maybe to mount the telescope on top but we don't have counterweights yet so we need a counterweight bar and that's why the threads within the declination axis are so important um, and so 
Fortunately, I bought a little bolt like that uh, that has M12 threads on top on Amazon. And all I needed to do was like to get in there and you can screw it in. And you know, it works fine. And if you find the right way to put counterweights there of the right diameter, it works. There are Skywatcher counterweights for the Star Adventure that I believe would actually fit on that. But in the end, I saw there was a company, a Japanese comp company called iBell that actually sold a proper counterweight bar that is much heavier than this bolt. And so that means that I could even use like small telescopes without even um, a counterweight, just the bar would be enough. And this bar, what's very nice is that it, it accepts um, uh, Vixen uh, counterweights, which, you know, I have tons of Vixen counterweights lying around. So, because I like Vixen, I really do. Um, even though all my mounts these days are Skywatcher. But here we are, we have a counterweight on our mount. Now, full disclosure, this is not the first time I actually opened this mount because this is actually the third time I took this video. We had various technical issues. Uh, but um, when I first put that on and then I tried to do this, there was a huge amount of backlash, like crazy amount of backlash in uh, the RA axis. And the declination axis was much better. And so in a follow-up video, we'll show you how you can tune that. There's two sources of backlash for each, each axis, and I'll go into both of uh, these uh, sources of backlash. Now, we have the M12 bolt, we have the counterweight on, we have, uh, we're ready to accept a telescope or a lens, everything's ready, we have a wedge, we can polar align it as much as we want, awesome, but the mount is still not ready to be um, used in equatorial mo mode because it only knows about alt as right now. But Skywatcher actually published a firmware to be able to use it in equatorial mode. It works great, even though uh, Skywatcher is very clear about the fact that this mount is not supposed to be used for astrophotography. It's just, we give you this form firmware, use at your own risk. If it doesn't work well, eh, I don't care, kind of thing. So let's get and uh, this installed. Okay, and we are now on the Skywatcher website. You'll need a computer to actually update the mount motor controllers or the mount firmware to be able to use the equatorial mode. So to do so, on the Skywatcher website, we go to support, we go to uh, software and firmware, and then we'll want to go to motor controllers. And in there, you want to download the motor controller firmware loader Wi-Fi version. Uh, you'll also want to download the, um, this one, the AZ GTI mount right arm AZ EQ dual mode version 3.22. So let's download this. While we're at it, you'll probably want the ASCOM driver for the SynScan app so that you can actually control the mount from your computer over Wi-Fi. And you will likely want the SynScan app as well for Windows, which is here. So we've downloaded four package packages and we'll use two to update the mount itself. Now to connect to the mount, by the way, I'll be uh, controlling this mount over Wi-Fi using the Skywatcher ASCOM driver. There is also an EQ Direct cable available just for this mount. It doesn't work with other Skywatcher mounts, um, but to get basically direct control from the computer using the EQ mod driver. Uh, now, by the way, one of the things is that there is a bubble level both on the wedge and on the mount so that you can uh, level the mount uh, and the tripod head very well. But as you may know, I don't really care that much about balancing, a bit leveling the tripod when you're in equatorial mode, uh, since once you're aligned to the uh, polar axis, your rotation axis for RA is parallel to the Earth's rotation axis and it doesn't matter anymore. If that sounds weird to you, go and watch my video on that. I'll be linking it, uh, to it up above. Uh, okay, so I have downloaded those four pieces of software and I've put them all in the same folder. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to unpack the modern controller firmware. And we are going to uh, unpack also the firmware loader into their own, uh, into, into their own folders. And here we are, we have both ready. And the next step will be for me to actually turn on the mount. 
Now, uh, the battery that I use to turn on the mount tries to be smart, and it's very annoying actually that it tries to be smart because it tries to detect whether there is any power draw, and if there isn't, it turns itself off. And it doesn't detect any power draw when I use this mount, which can be quite annoying, but it's fine for, uh, for my actual setup because it does detect a power draw when I used a cooled astrophotography camera, which I do. So uh, you'll see me like clicking on that button from time to time. This is just to keep the battery turned on. Um, okay, so let's turn the mount on and an, an LED has started uh, blinking on the mount. And what we're gonna do is we're going to actually connect to the Wi-Fi network that has been created by the mount, which is called, called SynScan underscore some hexadecimal number. So let's connect to it and we'll leave it to connect. It looks like it takes forever, but it's actually very short. It's just Windows will look for network for a long time. Um, the mount itself, by the way, can connect to your home Wi-Fi network as well uh, via its settings, uh, but by default, it will create its own access point to which your smartphone can connect to, your computer can connect to, and you can connect, uh, control the mount from there. Once I am connected, I will open the mother controller firmware um, uh, loader that we just downloaded. And the first thing I'll do is I'll click on MC version to make sure whether I can actually get the version of the uh, firmware from the mount in here. And yes, I can, which means that I am properly connected. Next step will be for me to browse for the firmware file that we also downloaded and unpacked just now. And here it is. We'll just select this MCF file and then I'll just click on update. And I'm really making sure I'm not losing power to the mount. And it's going on. It's very fast, actually. It takes just a few seconds. And now it's done. And it tells us to turn off the power. So we turn off the power to the mount and uh, we'll restart it later. Now, what I'll do next is what you should do next. Actually, I've already done it, but is install the ASCOM driver and then unzip the uh, SynScan Pro software. The way that it works is that the SynScan Pro software will connect to the mount and the ASCOM driver will connect to the SynScan, uh, SynScan Pro software. The ASCOM driver doesn't connect to the mount directly, it needs to go through SynScan Pro. So, uh, let's see how that works. So if I uh, open up SynScan Pro, we want to see whether, once I turn on the mount again, we can actually connect to the mount. So I'll be, uh, again, selecting my Wi-Fi from the mount and let's open up SynScan Pro and here we are. So we're going to click on connect. It's going to complain about setting the location. Um, I don't have a location sensor on my PC so I'll just put random numbers for now. Well, I'll get back to that later on and then I'll just click on connect searching and you can see that it, it suggests to me either alt as mode or equatorial mode. And the only reason you're getting this choice is because you've just updated the motor controller firmware on the mount. If you do not see this choice, it means your mount is still using an alt as only uh, firmware and you didn't update the correct firmware. So let's go into equatorial mode and uh, let's ump the speed and see. So it's not super silent, but it's not the end of the world either. And the mount seems to be working pretty well. I can control it from the SynScan app. Now, can I control it with ASCOM software like Nina? And the answer is absolutely. So Nina will always be for me the control brain, the control center of my astrophotography setup. And we can absolutely connect to the mount. So to connect to the mount, uh, and it works for pretty much any application like SGP or, or SharpCap that can connect to a mount, we'll select the SynScan app driver. And for me, the default settings are okay. So it's basically looking for the SynScan app. It connects to the app and the app connects to the mount. You could even run the app on a smartphone as long as both the PC and the smartphone are connected to the access point of the mount. You'll be, you would be able to specify the IP address of the smartphone to connect to the app on the smartphone. It gets a bit weird. It is doable. I'm not doing it. Um, and we can say, okay, the default settings will work if the app is running on your local computer. And then we can connect to it. 
uh, we are not going to update the coordinates in Nina and now the telescope is connected let's see if we can actually control it from Nina and yes we can so we are completely set up for our equatorial setup now there is stuff left to do which is tuning the mount itself and the mount mechanisms are spring loaded but the springs I don't think are strong enough for a proper um, equatorial mode so we might I'm not sure exactly what I'll do but I think I'll make them unspring loaded by just ignoring the spring and basically setting the worm gear um, meshing manually but I'll see what I'll do and that will be in a further video about tuning this AZ GTI uh, mount so until then <laughs> make sure if you're not subscribed to this channel and this is the type of content that interests you it's not just about mounts it's about astrophotography in general tons of different content technical non-technical imaging all that kind of stuff uh, if that sounds interesting feel free to go down click the subscribe button click that notification bell so you can see the follow-up to this video and if you're already subscribed, uh, feel free to go down below in the comments. Let me know what you think about the mount, what you think I should be doing, whether you have any suggestions. And feel free, if you like this video, to leave a like uh, down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you know, whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the ceiling and the stars. <laughs> As much as you can by the way the mount itself and all of the the accessories wedges that kind of stuff i'll be leaving links in the description below those are affiliate links to opt uh, just to be clear uh, and that's pretty much it so uh, thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time